uh, and all the advancements of uh, of learning, uh, how much learning is changing over the over the last few years. Uh, what can we say about the chief learning officer's job? My summary is that um, it's not only changing rapidly, but very much is at risk. So the chief learning officer's job is at risk today, basically because the relevance of the job is becoming larger, but it's more difficult to achieve. So um, our point here is to try to summarize in a few points uh, what is the survival kit for the chief learning officer and his or her team in order to make it in this new world. First piece of equipment for the chief learning officer is a flashlight. As, as you can see, I'm trying to make it simple. Well, this is a sophisticated flashlight, as, as you can see, but anyway, a flashlight. Why do we need a flashlight for in these new times? Well, we still need to understand very carefully how we make money. How do we invest? How do we make revenue? And how do we spend it? Where is the PL composition? And our first responsibility remains to understand that and to make that be understood by all employees. Doing that with new media, for sure. That, but we need to understand that going to social media needs to remain relevant for the business. Second piece of equipment, binoculars. These are some sophisticated binoculars because you need sophisticated binoculars to do what? Well, to understand the evolution of the business and in parallel, what is the evolution of the skills you need. And what you can see on this page is in the case of a mature country in Accenture in Western Europe, which is changing quite dramatically, rapidly also, the skills that we don't want to have more of, that we have abundance of, and that we need to reskill to new areas which are in green where we need to grow faster and to a greater volume that we have today. So understanding this picture will give the chief learning officer an idea of what needs to be done on a strategic level. And without that, it is difficult to be relevant with or without social media. With that, you can define a roadmap. And the roadmap is important regardless of the means that you use. You need to understand where you're going to go. You need to understand what skills you want to grow and what skills you want to divest in. Understanding those skills, you will choose from the different media you have at your disposal to put them to work in the direction that you want. Third piece of equipment, a ruler. This is a very classic ruler, but it's still useful, at least at my home. So, what do we need a ruler for? We need a ruler to understand the cost and value of skills. And this is, in this page, a very, very easy example to, to understand. And this changes uh, in, by different countries. But uh, in the Western world, we've seen, for example, that mortgage processing, which is very abundant in terms of skills in the banking industry, in the retail banking industry, is not required at the volume that is available. However, more skills, more volume of skills is required at risk management and collections and foreclosures. And understanding this imbalance using social media that you can scrutinize is very important for a chief learning officer. Without that, 
without a picture like this, you will not understand the imbalance between the cost of your workforce and the value they provide in terms of skills, which is skills is the primary concern of any uh, chief learning officer and the currency they have to use. Also, the ruler will help you decide where to invest and where to divest. When we do this type of exercise with uh, a lot of companies, we find that they are still investing a lot in obsolete skills just because people still need to be trained on something. Okay? So basically wasting the investment on things that don't matter anymore. So understanding very, very uh, strictly where do we need to invest for the future, what do we need to invest to maintain the, our current skills fresh, and what do don't need to invest any further is also important. This is an example from the oil industry. Um, many years ago, the oil industry decided to divest on a, on a specific skill called drilling. Drilling was considered to be simple, was considered to be straightforward, and they decided to outsource it. Well, over the years, those companies that acquired, that embraced this skill, sophisticated it. And now, many of them are valued in the stock market more than the oil mayors. Why? Because they've been able, from a single rig, to reach very disparate uh, positions in the sea, under the sea, so that they are able to reach um, uh, uh, huge quantities of oil from the same location and be much more efficient. So this is another example of why skills planning is so important. Okay, this is a difficult piece of equipment to have at home, and also risky if you have children, which is my case, and it's difficult also to acquire um, clothes like that to be protected. Anyway, blast furnace is important. Why blast furnace is important? Because you need to give new shape to people's skills. And with a blast furnace, you take the iron ore or you take old cars, old bicycles, old metal equipment and transform it into new things. So we need to do that with people. The typical formula companies follow is let people go and hire. Let people go and hire. And that game is very expensive. All right? So we need to understand, coming to the example before, that we need to bring some of the skills that are still valid in the mortgage processing area in this retail bank and transfer them to the new areas where we need them. Because there's more in the overlapping than in the separation area between them. And we will avoid this situation where we spend 10 years, sometimes more, investing in in uh, having the best players of music around the world of, uh, playing any instrument to end up in the street because there's not, not enough capacity in proper orchestras to have them on their payroll. So with this in mind, and, and I'm sorry to use this example, but it is true, there's no correlation between how hard it is to develop a skill and the value in the market because it depends on demand. And in any company, it depends on internal demand. Fifth quiz, uh, uh, piece of equipment for you, for CLOs, a magnifying glass. Why? Because using social media or traditional means, you still need to focus on the individual needs and value. With social media, it's much easier now, but still difficult to provide value to the individual, not to the workforce or to the department. A tablet, of course. Why? Because we need to understand how 90% or more of learning will be delivered. This is a message also about the, the need to enrich the chief learning officer's abilities around technology. Because technologies will evolve, will change, social media will evolve, will change. 
but we need to be kept up to date in understanding it. what means do we need to apply for what purpose. Because sometimes we are very rich in means, but we do not understand the purposes. Number seven, and there's only ten, so don't worry, okay? There's only ten, not, not fifty. A stereoscope, I think, I, I, I hope I have uh, spelled it correctly. Why do we need a stereoscope? We need a stereoscope to be able to reach out in these social networks that we can build inside or use outside to understand what value is each individual bringing to the organization and to understand what value is bringing this individual to their peers. In this case, you can see To, to formalize where you have to add value to the organization. You can, you can contribute knowledge, you can connect to people so that they perform better, or you can enrich somebody else's pieces of knowledge so that it is, in the end, better for the rest of the organization. And you can provide people a score and make them compete between each other. Sometimes some type of measurement is important around collaboration in the organization so that people are encouraged to do better. And this has consequences for the organization. And this is just another example that gives you an idea of where you are. If you are, uh, you are having a moderate impact, you are having a high impact. By the way, these two are my own examples taken from yesterday's uh, impact analysis. All right. At the same time, we need to help the workforce focus and manage time. I see sometimes my children, my own children, being slaves to their own artifacts. So I think a, a mandatory topic in every school and in every management school sooner probably will be how to manage time and attention. Number eight, you need a piggy bank. Why do you need a piggy bank? Because you need to show your savings. You know, you need to understand how applying the new social media artifacts, you can save money for the organization. Applying new technologies, you can save money for the organization. They will ask for the savings anyway. Number nine, and this is a little violent, but you need an axe. Why do you need an axe? You need an axe because... You need to split your organization between the architects, between the designers, between the top thinking in your area and those who operate your services. And the minute you don't distinguish between the two, the lower the center of gravity of the area will be. So you need to split them to let the value area go up. And number 10... A telescope. And why a telescope? Because you need to aim high. Aim high. And with social media, this is even more important. Because you need to do what? You need to contribute. And this is very strategic for any organization that wants to make an impact in their communities to the, co to the corporate social responsibility agenda. And learning is always a key aspect of this by teaching the community useful skills, by letting the community know what's going to be hot coming in a, in a few months or in a few years so that they can prepare for that, or uh, helping the handicapped be ready to be prepared to perform uh, relevant jobs in the future in your own organization. So there are many ways in which learning can contribute. This is always in the spotlight of CEOs, and I recommend that you do that. And with that, I close. Thank you very much.